All right, guys, we are currently inside of a quality inn in the mountains getting ready for a wedding today. And yeah, I am working with what I've got. It's a very limited setup, but we've got a lot to dive into and discuss when it comes to roster changes, roster updates, and over inside the EMEA scene, over inside the APAC North scene, and a lot of cryptic messages once again that are being decoded for the Apex Legends North American scene. So what's all going on inside the scene? Firstly, Esports World Cup came out to say, champions, keep your eyes on the prize. Tournament details were then explained with a World Cup for $2 million inside of Apex Legends. And you could see all the signed up qualifiers that were going down. I really like that. You know, I don't know if I like it, but I kind of like it. Like there seems to be some sort of like an open qualifier type thing that's going on for each region. And so then you also have Liquipedia coming out to kind of explain some of the teams and how some of this stuff and the formats go into work. So Dark Zero, Moist Esports. So yes, there were these teams that were deemed like here's the 30 teams inside of it, but then there was also teams that qualified. So it seems like they were going based off of split one, uh, you know, playoffs in order to qualify for this. So Dark Zero, Moist Esports, TSM Roster, Team Liquid, Disguised, Elevate Gaming, Space Station, Luminosity, Aurora, Navi, Alliance, uh, Made in Heaven, 07, Passion, then you've got 2R1C. Then to scroll down, you've also got more Omit, Fnatic, uh, Reject, Winity, uh, Kenetrope Gaming, Riddle Order, GIG, Crazy Raccoon, Rams Red, Northeption, Wonton Dumpling. List goes on. But here's how the format would work. It would be a best of three, which is literally just, you know, a three map set uh, of, you know, and then also 20 teams per map, of course. So this is like, like an initial setting, I guess. Group stage would then be eight groups of 20 teams competing on four maps. And then the top five teams from each group would advance into the semifinals then the maps and group stage would be map one and two on world's edge match three and four on storm point semifinals would be two groups of 20 teams competing on four maps top 10 teams from each group go to the finals then the map for the semifinals would be once again storm point for one and two world edge for three and four then the finals would be one group of 20 teams competing on six maps and the best team advancing to the main event at the esports world cup in saudi arabia so Maps in the finals would be World's Edge for map one and two, Storm Point for map three and four, and then map four or five and six would be World's Edge again. And the tournament scoring, uh, pretty similar to ALGS, right? You know, first is 12 points, second, nine points, goes down to seven, five, four, three, two, one, and so on and so on. So very interested to see how all of this stuff plays out. We had a lot of people, of course, saying, you know, I think it should have been done by way of regions. I think it should have been country-based. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be. It's going to be based on these rosters and specifically i say that because tsm put out of course a hundred and so they're getting ready for the world cup as well right but it's just more than apex legends they showed their apex legends clip they show some other games involved here we know that they're you know uh, basically tsm is going to be involved in multiple different titles so it's not as simple as uh hey you know this confirms the tsm roster of course it could and a lot of the you know players were in the comments can't wait to win imperial house says and then verholz i'm super excited for this reps this is huge so everybody is saying that at this point they're baiting you know like to troll that like this is obviously not going to happen on the other hand people think okay this kind of confirms that we are going to be uh, with the tsm still of uh, the normal tsm roster nothing's going to change and all that baiting that they were doing before was obviously not real then on the other hand a lot of people are not believing that so you had firstly mandy coming out it's a lot of these nba references that are going down right now mandy puts out larry bird a link to a tweet and they've all been putting out their own and then you've got evan putting out dirk and everybody's like okay what do these mean so the the concept i get is dirk has won a title without being on a super team and so the ru the rumors the leaks right now is that there's super Super teams being built right imperial how joining up with dark zero alongside zero and how would be changing roles to be a fragger instead of an igl maybe co, co igl and like the thought of zero and, and how being on the same team of course would be crazy right so that's why i'm saying they're posting all these pictures of super teams and you've seen that the miami heat stuff you've seen the chicago bull stuff with michael jordan and, and, and co so but then you see dirk and so verholz's idea is i'm gonna go win a title without those super teams and so that's where uh, all this baiting seems to go but you know at this point it's just like I, I don't even know man i mean it's every day they're putting this stuff out it's got to be farming then again we are getting from a lot of sources as well that it's not farming that it is true tsm is going to be making some changes but we've also got to make mention coming from tsm why are they having issues why did they not have a good algs finals what was going on of course we know they didn't get a lot of ring pools there and they had like literally zero and it was an unfortunate situation to say the least but hal jumps in to talk about their team fighting and their experience at algs and here's what he had to say roll the clips whatever it might be right but then 
where there was times where we were in good positions where we could have won the game or gotten a lot of points, but then All we would right. just Wait we would just fuck up. We, we would just lose it three v three. Let's go. So, so it's like. But I decided to play with diamond threes. I would put us in a good position, <laughs> and then we would have to fit, win it win it three v three to do well, and we would just lose game. it. Like you. That happened so many times. And it just like. It, nothing was going right. That's why we do. That's why you do like. If you can't, I've said it before. If you can't win, you cannot win or do well in a competitive game if you cannot win your fights, right? You not unless you're the only team in the fucking lobby, you're not gonna win a game or get top five, top three. You cannot get top five or top three without winning a fight or forcing yourself into that position. It's just impossible unless zones ending on your fucking head the entire game. All term and long that we just could not, for whatever reason, win a 3v3. That just fucked us the entire time. And it probably derailed our confidence completely to the point where it's just like... What do we do? You know? Which is why I started playing Bangalore and letting Evan play Bloodhound. Like, all that stupid shit was happening. Like, it's like we forgot how to play, fucking play the game. One team. Yeah, you're right. Two teams, two teams. Slaving for 40 months. And it's not like we were taking this event like this like go bad fights. It's just one. We were oh, even we were, it's not, we weren't even taking bad fights either. Repulsor. Like it was fair three v threes with equal armor and everything. We're smoking these guys too. Literally smoking them. Now there's also some other big news inside of the EMEA scene. Zayn will be making a return back into the ALGS scene. Honestly, this was no big surprise. Whenever Nasky had parted ways with Nags or, you know, th those guys in general just basically making that roster change for 07, we all saw that Zayn was coming back into the scene. We knew it was a no-brainer. Nasky has been super close with Zayn for quite some time. Well, it finally was confirmed. Zayn came out, he came out to say that he's going to be playing with Amphi Nasky. And it, you know, it's also going to be Zane as well as the third. So then the coach is still obviously Don. And so 07 is back with their new slash former teammate, I guess you would say. Of course, Nasky's played with Zane in the past. So, you know, I think this roster change, honestly, is kind of a, a little of the same. I think that Zane is not necessarily a, a step up or a step down from Nags. I think that there's a lot to prove, right? Zane's been out for quite some time. So he's going to come back with a chip on his shoulder trying to prove himself. So I, I'm not saying that I dislike this change. I just don't think it was necessarily an upgrade nor really a downgrade. We'll see how the synergy uh, continues on as they go into Split 2 and the Esport World Cup as well. But then you had Kinetrip Gaming come out as well and share their explanation of their future by way of Google Translate over on Twitter to say thank you all for the support here at the World Championship. But this is a player withdrawal announcement following the results of the World Championships. I think they meant just split one playoff. Each player requested that they try working with new different members. And as a result of this, we've decided to not renew our contract. We received a lot of support from everyone who wanted to see this group with Kinetrip Gaming. We sincerely apologize for not meeting your expectations. Kinetrip Gaming stance is to respect the wishes of each individual player. And although this was not the outcome that I guess we wanted, we would appreciate your continued support for each player's efforts in the future. And of course, this is their roster with Mia, K1, Tappy, and Co. So unfortunate to see this change. I think this was a very talented roster. Unfortunately, you know, they didn't get the result they wanted, but I still don't think that they necessarily massively disappointed. So, uh, you know, a little bit of an interesting change and we'll see how it obviously continues to fold. But also wanted to mention some roster updates, roster leaks, I guess you would say. Mia K has been spotted on a face it team with Hammer Drill and Melstera. So this team has a lot of history and also a lot of talent, in my opinion. And according to some other rumors that are going around as well, it's not only this roster, but also, of course, don't forget Pulverex has now shut down shop. And so it would be Sudataki with Shunmi and Fchan over on RIG. And I'm not sure if this is the original RIG that like Dark Zero was basically back in the day or if this is a different rig. I'll uh, have to look into that. Fnatic did come out with some better news that uh, Yuka F was going to be around for quite some time. End of the 2026 season. So these guys are signing uh, deals for a lot longer than I think North America is. So very excited about uh, his long-term stay with Fnatic. Of course, we love Fnatic, and those guys played really well at the uh, recent ALGS split one playoff, finishing in third place. Also wanted to mention, just so we wrap it up, Panders had uh, recently came out to say, once again, still looking for a team for split two. He swapped to a PS5 controller recently. Panders, obviously, a lot of experience, a lot of history in here. 
Uh, we'll see if he can find himself on a squad after he and Zara are going to be splitting up. Also, Serdell came out, former uh, teammates with Nasky as well over on the KCP Pioneers. So LFT for the World Cup and also Pro League split too. We'll see if Serdell finds himself in a good favorable spot. And then Synetic also came out. And uh, this was a little bit of an interesting situation. So this is made in heaven. And they basically came out to say they're no longer going to be playing with Taxington. They'll be looking for one for the upcoming Pro League and other tournaments. And then also other tournaments, right? World Cup is a big one. Taxington was not happy about this one. And he came out yesterday to really share his frustration, saying it was his spot. It was, you know, he, he felt like he was snaked out of the whole thing. And it just wasn't fair. And so very interested to see how that one plays out as well. Lastly, G Dolphin came out to say he's also LFT and willing to try out any teams for the EMEA Pro League. He's aware that roster changes are happening and want to shoot his shot. So please don't sleep on him. Can't wait to see if a lot of these uh, streamers, these content creators that are good enough uh, can really find their, their way inside of the pro league once again, because we know that they have a lot of talent and have shown themselves pretty worthy at some time. So we'll see how it all falls into place. Let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comment section below. Like and subscribe. And until the next time, we'll see you all later, Gators.